to uh, just make it sm smoother. So yeah, Cyber Dragon should not be an ultra rare in the main box, especially uh, Cyber Twin Dragon. I understand why it's an ultra rare; it can attack twice, and it's super easy to bring out. So that's all I got to say about Cyber Dragon. Uh, you got the Atlantean cards. Okay, I'm seeing like three of those. Yeah, yeah, only three. The okay. big boy, the little boy, okay. and the... Okay, so let's start with the most important one, Poseidra, the Atlantean Dragon. So this is a level 7. You can, uh, especially when this card from your hand or graveyard, by attributing three level 3 or level water monsters. And upon the, it being summoned that way, all spell and trap cards on the field get returned to the hand... And then once that happens, if at least three of them will re at least three cards will return to the hand via this effect, all monsters of book shows lose three hundred attack for each. That's I never I never <laughs> realized how much it was if you do that in this effect. Right, right. But yeah. So this is the Atlantean boss monster, it's a woolly big monster. And oh, they know, can nice. and uh, the ability to um, bring it from the graveyard for a summon that will also pretty much get rid of all the spell and trap cards. Effectively being a true nade. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and to keep in mind when it says return spell and trap cards on the field, that includes your field as well. So you can uh, put a whole back row if you wanted to. You uh, can like get around uh, soft ones with time clauses. Right, right, right. Then you can activate the card again, or just set the card again if you were just spamming it anyway, just to you know have it on the field. Let's say if you had Polly and you couldn't use it, I don't know why you're running Polly and Atlanteans, but go go with this. If you set Polly, uh, you can still return it to the hand. So, but anyway, so with uh, Besidra, it the having three level three or lower water monsters doesn't seem that difficult, really, especially given that we got. In this pack, uh, Deep Sea Diva. Yes. We, we always have heavy infantry. Is that right? We have both the infantry. Um... Yeah. So heavy entry, infantry is the one that gives you a digital normal zone for a level 3 or lower or sea something, I believe. Level 4 or lower, actually. But in this case, okay. you will want to be doing level 3. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually not that difficult. And looking at the... You know, looking at the card, wait... No, never mind. I was uh, looking at the prior of the ice barrier, and it's just like, that is a low-level water, but you can't summon a level 5 or higher that ton. I don't so, have ice barrier on know. this list, except for their synchro. <laughs> I'm surprised by how many ice barrier cards we got in this. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Continuing off of Poseidra, we have the... Where is it? I, I just saw it. There we go. Uh, Legendary Atlantean Triton. This is a level 3 water sea serpent. You contribute this card and one sea serpent monster you control, especially a Poseidra from your hand or deck, and then all monsters you bunk chose lose 300 attack. So basically, it's a way of getting out the boss monster easier. And also, you just get the stat decrease without having to worry about the amount of spell and trap cards you would have to return. And it summons from the deck, which does make it a lot easier. Right. However, at the cost of easier to access is the uh, effect of returning every spell and trap on the field to the yeah, hand. But but at the same time, you now have you now got it out of the deck. You can use the effect from the graveyard to summon it if it gets destroyed later on. Yep. And I want I, I, I kind of want to save Deep Sea Diva for the end, because I have it at the end of all the Fishborg, the Nimble, the Mermail, and I, and I want to talk about how it all works with it, but I okay. do have to mention this combo before I go any further. Deep Sea Diva, bring out Tridon, then use the effect of Tridon to tribute that one, bring out Poseidra. It's that easy. All you had to do is yeah. draw one Deep Sea Diva in your hand, and you instantly have this monster on board. And if you start off with Deep Sea Diva and another, um, another Sea Serpent that's level 3 or lower in your hand... You summon Deep Sea Diva, effect of it, the special summon, uh, Heavy Infantry. Infantry lets you normal summon Tridon or whatever else you have in your hand. Mm -hmm. And if you have this boss monster in your hand as well, 
then you instantly bring it out. Or if you send it to the graveyard by an effect, which trust me, there are ways to do it. Gen X Undyne. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's like another one. I think one of the Nimbles sends a card. Um, oh, no, it sends a fish. Okay, oh, well. But still, there's now, ways to do it. Now, on to the final of the Atlantean cards. Call of the Atlanteans. This is a quick play spell. You can target three level three or low or see open type monsters in your graveyard, special all three of them. But you cannot special on any monsters for the rest of the turn after you activate this effect. Good thing it's a quick play. <laughs> yeah. Because you you would... The only way to... Do, clearly, the idea is to use this to bring up a Sidra, but you're going to have to use that on your opponent's end phase. Yep. Yep. So ideally, the situation I see is uh, if you have monsters on the board... Uh, such as the Nimbles, which we're going to talk about in the future. Um, actually, no, that's only Sea Serpent, isn't it? Yeah, dang yeah. it. Okay, okay, never mind. Well, if, if you have a bunch of Atlanteans in your grave and some of them got destroyed by battle this turn, activate this card at the end of it, supposed to summon all of them, go into Poseidra the next turn. It's it's really simple. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. But is that all you guys say about the, Al- the Atlantean stuff? Yeah. I do want to add one thing before I move on to Mermails, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing the the more, I guess added to archetypes reading, uh, because Sixus is kind of under the weather with his throat, uh, trying to save his and voice. And also, a little bit. I don't know anything about Mermails. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I don't really know a whole lot of them either, but since they've been in Duel Links, I've learned a lot compared <laughs> to previously knowing nothing. <laughs> but uh. So, one last thing before I move on to Mermails. Atlantean Heavy Infantry, when it's discarded... Uh, actually, no. When it's sent from the uh, to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, you can target one uh, face-up card your opponent controls and destroy it. This includes monster and spell and trap. And then Marksman is the same thing, but it's for set cards. So, these two are not only really good for getting to the field uh, with Deep Sea Diva and Tridon and all that. Um, Tridon's effect triggers them. Poseidra's effect triggers them. Um, any of the mermail stuff I'm about to mention triggers them. It's really simple. It's it's just it's they work together not only in the lore I guess they they kind of have some interactions, uh, but also just in the game so much the, interaction. Uh, there was a reason uh, there was a deck called Morlantian. Yeah, 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 and it was top tier for for a yeah. while. Um, but but yeah. one question is Neptibus the Atlantean prince in the game? Uh, I don't think so. Let me look at let me look this up. Atlantean. I'm just gonna see what pulls up. Um, no, it is not. Neither okay. is dragoons. Oh, okay. So that's the two of them missing. Yep, yep. But anyway, so moving on to mermails. Uh, they got quite a bit of stuff. Um, eight cards actually. Excuse me. And uh, I will be going over some older cards too for reference of this. Um, but I'll go ahead and start with the new stuff. So. First up is Abyss Dine. This is level 3 Aqua. Uh, it is a kind of a weaker monster with a 1,000 attack, 2 on defense, but you're not really using it for that. You're using it for um, field presence and also um, it's pretty good effect. When this card is added from a deck or graveyard to your hand by a card effect, Mermel also have multiple ways of doing this. You can special this card from your hand. You must control a Mermel monster to activate and resolve this effect. Well, if you're using a Mermel effect to do so, and it's like Abyss Pike, uh, which is one of the previous cards added, when summoned, you discard a water to add a level 3 water from your deck to your hand. This thing, uh, it's really easy to do. So, you control a mer- mermail, you activate and resolve this effect. Then, when this card is special summoned by the effect of a mermail uh, monster, including its own, you can target one level 3 lower mermail in your graveyard and special summon that target. So, going back to Poseidra, because there's a reason I put this first in the water stuff. It's because it, it's very, I guess, centered on this. Um, when you... If you just start your turn with one Abyss Pike, you then discard a water monster in your hand. So that's all you need is Abyss Pike and one water monster, preferably an Atlantean. You search Abyss Dine, summon it with its effect, then summon one from your graveyard. If you discarded a Mermail with Abyss Pike to activate the effect in the first place, you would have that already. Uh, And then now you have three monsters on board. So... Very field swarming focused, I would say, and uh, this card really can help bring monsters to the board for Poseidra's effect. Um, if it's in the graveyard, or if it's in your hand, you can summon it by tributing three level, uh, 
level, uh, th uh, three level three or lower water monsters. So Abyss Stein is really good for field presence. Obviously, with Pike on board, he won't be able to do that. However, there is a card called Legendary Ocean, which lowers the levels of all water monsters in the hand and on the field by one. So there's <laughs> potential for that to be really good as well. Um, and it is searchable by uh, Atlantis Warrior, something like that. You discard it to search for the field spell. Um, so really good, really good uh, synergy and, and just overall flow with this water deck. It reminds me a lot of the uh, the water um, the water dragon uh, main box that was released over a year ago now that had a lot of, a lot to do with sea stealth attack and all that. By the way, that's usable in this deck too. I'll get to that at the end. Next is Abyss Linda or Lind. I don't know. It's a level three Aqua, fifteen hundred attack, twelve hundred defense. This card on the field is destroyed and sent to a grave. You can special summon a memory from your deck, except itself. You can only use this effect once per turn. So. Um, simple effect, it just floats. It's good for bringing out your Abyss Pike because it also works when it's special summoned. Um, be careful because it says when it might miss timing depending on if your opponent chains anything to it. Um, or if you chain Abyss Lind to something your opponent does. Like if they have um, Neos and they destroy it and they search their spell, then you activate this. Uh, Pike won't work. Next is Abyss Oshia? Oshia? Okia? Ikea? I don't know. <laughs> 1100 attack, 1900 defense. Uh, Aqua again, level 3. You can target one mermail monster you control, special summon any number of level 4 or lower mermail monsters from your deck whose combined levels are less than or equal to the level of that monster. Then send that monster to the graveyard. You can only use the effect uh, of it once per turn. So it's not really that. Uh, I, I don't know. This effect is potentially good, but it's. I don't know. I don't really see it being. That great. It already requires you to have a mermail on the field in the first place, um, which if you summoned it from the effect of Dine and have Pike on the board, yeah, that's great because then you can send Pike to the graveyard or or Dine to the graveyard to bring out another level 3 or level 4. So there's potential for it to be good. It just requires a bit more setup, I think, and for that it's not as good or consistent for the deck. I feel like putting this in your deck potentially harms it uh, more than helps it. Uh, because if you start off with this in your hand then and don't have a way to put it in the grave to revive it with Dine, it makes it sort of difficult. Um, I'm going to skip the next card I show because I, I want to say that one for later. But Next is Abyss Mander. This is a level 4. Uh, thick. Thick boy. I think it's a boy. I don't know. I can't really tell. Anyway, 2,000 defense, 100 attack. Fish, you can banish this card from your graveyard, activate uh, one of these effects. Increase the levels of all mermails you control by one, or increase the levels of all mermails by two. So, um, I don't really think it's relevant in this meta currently. Um, if we were in an Xyz, oh, I apparently timed out due to inactivity, even though I have been moving around and typing on here a bunch. Okay, whatever, I will re-log back in. <laughs> But I don't think it's I don't think that card is that good in um, in this meta currently, uh, just because we're not in Xyz. When Xyz come out, that might be useful. Um, but uh, just currently, I do not see it being that useful. So skip this card. Moving on to the next one. This is uh, one of their best playmakers, especially if you're going for the rank seven engine, uh, which is primarily what Mermails try and do. Um, it seems, especially with Poseidra also being level 7. But we don't have ranks, so what would this thing be used for? Let's go ahead and read the effect. It's a water, aqua, uh, 1700 attack, 2400 defense. You can discard one other water monster to the grave, especially some of this card from your hand. When summoned this way, you can add a level 4 or lower mineral monster from your deck to your hand. This is great. Um, this is fantastic because the setup ideal, uh, the, the ideal setup for this is to have this in your hand and have another water, preferably an Atlantean. So you can get their discard effects. Um, then, whenever you do so, you summon it, add a, a, another Mermail monster from your deck to your hand, preferably uh, Pike, so you can normal summon it, because you still haven't normal summoned at this point. Then discard another water monster if you have one in your hand. This requires at this point three uh, in total, three monsters in total in your hand, uh, which if you're running a deck primarily of monsters, which I feel like you would be with this deck. Uh, Pike 
is very consistent. Even if you don't start off with it, if you start off with this thing, you get to make you start off with it. Uh, so then you discard another water monster, preferably at this point a mermail, uh, and then you can summon literally any of the other ones, um, or add any of the other ones that are level 3 uh, that are water. So, uh, a very good kind of combo here. It's not, really a, it's not really a power play, because it only has 1700 attack um, for a level 7 that's very weak, and 2400 defense isn't really that great either. Uh, but it is just consistency boosting. Um, and I guess this is a comparison. It's easier to bring out uh, than Abyss Megalo, but Abyss Megalo uh, is, I guess, more worth it to bring out. So, you know, it, it's, you kind of take your picks with this, but overall it works very well uh, for the X's engine, but for this game, I feel like it's going to be a consistency boost. Three more cards. This is a spell card, Abyss Scale of the Kraken. This is a quit spell. Quit on to a mermail against for an attack. When the monster effect that was activated on your opponent's side of the field resolves, negate the effect, then send this card to your graveyard. So, uh, this says when, so it can potentially miss timing. If your opponent chains, um, or has, let me put it this way, for Glad Beast or for a Romage, since their effects are mandatory, most of them anyway, uh, are mandatory, um, you don't really get a chance to activate your negate because they're chaining too fast, basically, because they're mandatory. Uh, so if, like, for, for example, if you want to negate the defense uh, swapping, the, the position swapping of, what, what's the blue one? Rosemary? Um, if you want to negate that, but your opponent activated it first, then activated their Bergamot effect to boost attack, you will be forced to negate the Bergamot um, because there's no option of when you of, of if you can negate it. It's just when an effect is activated on your opponent's side of field. Um, that's a monster effect. You have to negate it. So yeah, the thing about the abyss goes is they're all mandatory effects. Right. They would be so much better if they weren't, because uh, your opponent can really play around this, and that's why I don't see it being worth playing that much. Abyss Megalo does uh, search one of these whenever. It's summoned, uh, but there's better options for that card as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go over those better options. First is Abyss Sphere, which is a fantastic card. Continuous Trap, Spell Summon a Mermail Monster from your deck. Its effects are negated, and you can't activate any spell cards. But uh, it also has another effect. When this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. Destroy this card during your opponent's next end phase after activation. So ideally, uh, you want to activate this during your turn. And uh, summon an abyss from the deck. With Poseidra in mind, you want to bring out a level 3. Now, obviously, its effects are going to be negated, but it is a body on board for Poseidra's effect. Uh, summoning conditions. So, Sphere is really good because it summons any of them from the deck, anyone you need. It's just immediately there. It just, it's, I say immediately, but because it's a trap, it's on at least one turn delay. And if you activate this on your opponent's turn, it's going to get destroyed during their end phase so um actually no i think it's next end phase so it would have to be uh i guess their next turn i don't know i get confused when i read that part but anyway um you would probably most most likely you would want to activate this during your turn next is abyss scorn target a mermail monster you control against a thousand attack to the end phase when the set card is sent to the grave target a monster your opponent controls and send that target to the graveyard uh non-destruction which is great. Uh, however, it's only when it, the set card is sent to the graveyard. And I think Marksman only targets uh, opponent's cards. Yeah, yeah, one set card your opponent controls. I'm for it. Uh, Double Cyclone exists, uh, but I, you know, I don't think it's too worth it to run uh, for just this kind of effect, especially when you have something that, like Infantry and, and Marksman that does essentially the same thing. Um, so... It's just destruction rather than sending to the graveyard, which is definitely... Sending to the graveyard is definitely better. It, it's, it gets over Neo's Fusion and stuff like that, but um, it still does give a pretty decent attack boost for your Mermails. Uh, it helps your um, your Abyss, Abyss Tius, uh go from 1,700 to 27, your Megalo to 34. Uh, so I don't think it's anything to really laugh at. It's just, you know, it's kind of a more niche card, I would say, than a staple. Unlike Sphere. I think Sphere is a great card to run. 
So next is the Nimbles, and I'm gonna go ahead and let you uh, uh, continue with with this. If you're okay, up for it, so, if thoughts up for yeah, it. yeah. Uh, okay, so first off, we got Nimble Sunfist. So this one is when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard. You can send any fist from your deck to the graveyard. And then you can spend on one Nimble Sunfist from your deck. So it automatically replaces itself, and it's a foolish burial for a fist. Though it does have restored by battle. It's not once per turn, though. <laughs> True. Now, let's get into the best one to send via this. And that being Nimble Angler. So, if this card is sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard, you can spell on up to two level three or lower Nimble Marshals from your deck. Except another copy of Nimble Angler. So, you see the combo already, right? But just those Sunfisk, two, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Stunfisk gets destroyed, send Angler. You, you special on two off of Angler's effect, you special on the Sunfisk because Sunfisk got destroyed. So, it's and... all the three monsters on board. And all, all of them being level two, which, which is, is less than three. For <laughs> yes, pretty much and half of this box just goes back to Persidra. <laughs> I know it. No, I, I admit they themed it very well. Yep. And the only nimble left is the Manta. Manta, yes. So Manta is. More situational than the others. So, when this card is sent from the field to the graveyard by a card effect, you can spend some A number of nimble meta from your deck. So, it has to be sent from the, uh, sent to the graveyard, uh, from the field via a card effect, which is, uh, more situational. Definitely, yeah. And, and just to refresh my memory, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you use... Poseidra's effect of tributing and Tridon's effect, it doesn't work because it's a cost, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just sent by effect, not sent by cost. It's kind of like the Dark Worlds, if you ever have used... Yeah, a yeah, there's a semi, yeah, there's a semicolon and Trident. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the cost. So, it's more... It's less likely to go off than, say, Sunfist... But at least it's another name. Right. Something to bring out with Angler. Um, and I would at least maybe just run one. Just for the sake of bringing out it with Angler. Uh, but yeah. Just to fill up the field. In the ideal combo we, we mentioned. Or Six just mentioned. Because he knows a lot more about this than me. <laughs> yeah. I use this my White Awa deck. Yep. Speaking of white aura, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to read the effects, but you explain what they do in, a, in an effort to save your voice. <laughs> so, all right. So first up is a uh, white moray. Uh, it is a level two fish, six hundred attack, two hundred defense. During the turn, you normal summon this card. It can attack your opponent directly. Wow, a whole six hundred damage. If this card is special summon from the graveyard, you can treat it as a tuner this turn. So that's a theme that all the white. Fists, all two of them have oh, the the extract monsters too. If the, if they're revived, they count as a tunnel for that turn. Now with this one, the direct attacking it has six hundred attack. That's not very relevant. No. And also it has to be normal zone for that to happen. It's more just there as a level two fist. Yep. And. Uh... I, I guess like the the I guess this card is a good way to introduce you to the archetype of like what it's trying to do with the second effect, uh, but the main one I think you're going to be seeing is White Stingray, which is level four, fourteen hundred attack, thousand defense. It's a water fish, and it has this effect. You can special summon this card from your hand by discarding a water monster. Already, that's extremely good because it works with the Atlanteans. And it works to put a body on board, so you can have uh, monsters for uh, tuner and if you for like tuning and synchroing with with deep sea diva, if you normal summon that afterwards, um, you can just make level sixes instead of just level fives or fours, I guess. Uh, but not only that, as I mentioned previously, with uh, the legendary ocean reducing the levels of water monsters, this will be a level three. So once again, easy to bring out. 
Um, and it works with the rest of the cards we've talked about. Next so is, here's the thing. Uh, the uh, one that I always did was uh, discard Nimble Angler. That way you get a lot more on the field. Right. Immediately you would start off with two monsters, two of your Sunfish uh, and Stingray. Uh, it's just, the board is just completely covered. And, and, and mind you, this is, uh, if you start off with Stingray and Angler, that's just two cards that you need to start off the game with. You've already, if you have Legendary Ocean on the board, if, if you have, I guess, this field spell, I guess there's three cards you need for this. Um, well, four. <laughs> Never mind, this hand is not so very consistent as a thought. Yeah, you need Poseidra <laughs> for what you were thinking Right, of. right, right. But if you discard Poseidra, I guess there's also a way that you can swarm the field with yeah. other nipples and stuff like that. There's so, much, there's so much potential for it. There's so many combos that I don't even want to begin to think of all of them. Uh, but then it has the revival effect of becoming a tuner when it's from the grave. Uh, you can only use this effect once per turn, so you can't spam them to the board. Um, so yeah, this card's a lot better than the first one, um, as it has a summoning condition. Next is, uh, Whitefish Salvage. This, <coughs> excuse me, this used to be, uh, White Salvation, and I see why they changed it. <laughs> it may be. It may come off a little white supremacist. But uh, anyway, it is a continuous spell, and it's a pretty good one, if I remember it correctly. You can target one fish monster in your grave, add to your hand. You can only use this effect of white fish sal salvage once per turn. If this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, it's into your grave. Target one fish monster from your deck and either add it to your hand uh, or special summon it. Take it away. <laughs> The Wakovi is really good because of how Sting uh, the Stingray requires a discard, and you can just keep recycling it back to your hand, so you can e keep resummoning it to continue doing like uh, I don't know big or synchro plays. And then there's the uh, well, I say that, but they didn't put in any of the higher level white synchros. Yeah. But anyway, so. It's still a good idea to set this and just in the case that your opponent might destroy it because then, oh boy. <laughs> so we don't have the uh, Deep Sea King, but we definitely have some other fish that could walk. Yep, yep. This Fishborg, which is the next archetype we're going to talk about after this. But, uh, but yeah, this card, ironically, it doesn't really help the goal of reviving them from the graveyard. <laughs> It doesn't really help the theme, but it, it definitely helps with fish in general, uh, not just uh, the white fish. It just helps with uh, fish in general. Now, please do keep in mind uh, that this doesn't work with the aqua mermails or the Atlanteans as their sea serpent. Uh, so I feel like this will be more for a uh, nimble white aura focused deck, maybe fishborg as well uh, thrown in there. There's there's just so much just generic fish in in sea serpent water support there's no telling how many different types of decks we're going to see combined with all these archetypes because uh, they all just work so well with each other and then they have their own specifics that work like this card it, there's just so much to, to, to do with it uh, but the last white aura card is actually a white aura card i don't know why the rest of them are called white aura but yeah. we'll go with it white aura dolphin is the synchro of the deck it is it is level six water fish Takes one tuner plus one more non-tuner, so it is generic, uh, so you can run this in any of your uh, synchro decks. Once per turn, you can target one face up monster opponent controls. This attack becomes half its original attack at the end of this turn. That's great. If this card control is destroyed by opponent's card, either by battle or card effect, and sent to your grave. Banish one other water monster from your graveyard, and if you do, special them in this card, and if you do, it is treated as a tuner. Not just till the end of the turn, but forever. Yeah, the synchros don't have the... Un just for this time clause, they have a permanent chains. Which is kind of weird. <laughs> anyway, so, well, it's weird when you look at some of the ones like the level 8. Yes, a level 8 synchro tunnel. That's so relevant. Right. Anyway, so, it only has a good effect by dropping a monster's original attack, and it. The, uh, yeah, the floating isn't much of a ton. It just depends on 
how many waddles you have in the graveyard. Yeah, but if you're running the nimbles to make this, which most likely you are, you'll have plenty of them in the grave to, to keep reviving it. Yep, you can have permanent protection. Well, not protection, recovery, more accurately. Yep, and it's not once per turn, so as long as you have waters, you can keep bringing it back every time it gets destroyed. So, pretty good. But that's all the white aura stuff. Uh, next is Fishborg. And I guess I'll go ahead and we'll do the same format. I'll read it, you explain it, because I, I really just... I don't know about this archetype at all. <laughs> if you if you really want to call it an archetype, it's it's just four monsters. It's a it's a series. Five, excuse me. One of them being banned, uh, which is not in the game. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But um, this thing is level. This first one is Fishburg Archer. It's level three. Mm -hmm. Fish tuner. Uh, so it works well with the previously mentioned fish. Three hundred attack and defense. A discard is in your graveyard and you control the monsters during either of your main phases. You can discard... Wait a minute. How is this card in the game? <laughs> Wait. Did they, did they errata the effect for the links? Huh. No, that is didn't. interesting. It just, wow. Okay. Well, they broke their okay. rule. Because <laughs> they changed. Uh, as long as it doesn't say... Yeah, that's because I specifically said main phase two. But anyway, so with this one... Discard a water monster, especially when discard from your graveyard, but destroy all monsters you control at the beginning of the this turn's battle phase, except for water monsters. And there's That's a hard one to claws. And now, again, discard a water. So, Atlantean, Nimble Angler. N Nimble Angler would be really good because, let's see, this is a level 3 tuner. You can bring out two level 2 non tuners. Hey, you can make the. Uh, the, uh, what's it called? The gun kneel. Oh, yeah, 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 that thing. That thing's also in the game. And I'm going to talk about that at the end when it comes to, I guess, non-specific cards. But I guess it fits in with this segment. So I guess we'll get done. I'll, I'll talk about it after we get done with fish pork. But, yeah, this this card seems... It's just like, it's, it's insane how many of them have the same kind of effect. Discard of water, special summon it. Or do something it's else. It's as if they had a theme for this attribute. <laughs> right, right. But anyway, next one is uh, Doctor. This is a level 4, so you're going to have to run Legendary Ocean to make it work. It discards near your grave, and all face-up monsters you control, minimum of one, are fish pork monsters. It's a bit more specific. You special in this card, and if you do, banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use this effect um, once per turn. If you control a monster that is not a fish pork monster, destroy this card. So very okay, yeah, I guess it technically is an archetype. I guess. <laughs> I have never used this one. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> it's like, okay, the ideal, I guess, setup I'm seeing is Archer, discard Doctor to bring Doctor back. But why would you do that when you can do it with other things that are not level 4? <laughs> and that don't require you to only control Fistbog. Right, right. I guess not really a whole lot to say about this one. <laughs> okay, next is the last one for Fishborg. This is a level 1. Also fish, also tuner, uh, and it is uh, a water, of course. 200 attack, 100 defense. If a, if you have a monster in your graveyard other than Fishborg launcher and all of them are water, you can special summon this card from your graveyard, and if you do banish it when it leaves the field, this card cannot be used for a synchro uh, summon of a monster except for of a water monster. You can only use this effect of it once per turn. Very good. <laughs> oh cool, it's a fist that benefits itself. I can use our fist now. Yes, I saw that. I don't have it in this list, but that is a card that's also there. It's a counter trap that, that negates stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you it's not pretty like good. card with that name? It's an amazing name. It's just, it's incredible. It's, <laughs> but yeah, do you have anything to say about this card? I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory why it's good. <laughs> yes, yeah, if you're playing Water Monsters, it's a free special summon of a level 1 tunnel. Yep. You got put uh, in the so grave, but Archer can do that. White Stingray can do that. Pretty much the, the, the whole Vermeil archetype can do that. <laughs> the, the Sunfist can do that. So much. It's so a, much. It's just in one fist, yeah. 
it, it's it's just mad. It's mad what this archetype, not, not archetype, but just this type attribute <laughs> can do. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's just Fishborg generally are good. The only one I think that's really not really that great is Doctor. Even Planter, which is the one that was previously in the game, even this one's uh, decent. Once all those cards in their grave. Send the top card of your deck to your grave, and if it's a water, it's supposed to send this card from your graveyard. If you're playing a bunch of water monsters, oh yeah, I use that for tribute photo for uh, the uh, fisherman. Right, right, and, and it's yeah, Sindale. <laughs> it's super easy uh, to pull that effect off, and it's just like you know, there's only one bad fishborg, and even then, it's not necessarily that bad of a card. It's just more specific, which is why it doesn't work. <laughs> It's, it's the like, only one that makes it an archetype. Yeah, ironically, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, just the, the archetype itself is is very small but very good. I, I guess it's quality over quantity in this case. Same goes for nimble. Yeah, yeah, all of them have a very specific thing they want to do: swarm the field with as much little creatures as possible. Last card of the water archetype uh, that I want to talk to before I get to uh, Gunnir is Deep Sea Diva. Now. I say this for last on purpose, because this is the most insane card that we have in this box. I think this is actually more impactful than Cyber Dragon. Uh, it's still limited in real life. As you can see, there is a one. <laughs> it's been limited for how long now? This... I think it got hit due to... I, I think it was... Mormail or Facebook related? I think it got like, hit... The... At least... No, no, no later than uh, Zexel. Yeah, it had to have been hit at the same time as the Fistborg. This is crazy. Yeah, uh, Fistborg, which one is it? Launcher? Yeah, Launcher probably. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, what is it? Fish. Blaster. Blaster, yeah. If you control oh, Fistborg, you control over Water up. Monster, discard one card, plus some of this card from your grave. And it's, oh, I get it. It's not once per turn. I see why. <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, apparently oh my. Those, could, those could be used to, like, talk about Quasar or something like that. Oh, my god. It was gosh. something It was something insane. Jeez. Well, this card's definitely going to do a, a similar insane impact. It's definitely going to have a very large one. So... It uh, is a Sea Serpent. It's a level 2 tuner. When this card is normal summon, you can special summon a level 3 or lower Sea Serpent type monster from your deck. This is not once per turn, so if you summon it multiple times with, say, I don't know, uh, Heavy Infantry, you can bring it out. By the way, this summons Heavy Infantry. <laughs> so remember how that combo I was talking about earlier, where if you summon Deep Sea Diva, uh, then summon Infantry, and then another level 3 or lower Water Monster from your hand. If you have Poseidra in the graveyard of the hand, that's instant. That's literally three monsters on the board uh, with just the start of one card, basically. Okay, uh, now I understand why this got limited. You can summon it, bring out the one that gives it this normal summon of a sea serpent, then manage to send dragoons to the grave, sorts out any sea serpent. Guess what? This is a sea serpent. Normal summon that, and then special on any other one from your deck. So you get a lot of advantage. I can see why this got hit. Yep, yep. This is going to be, I guess, the the most abusable thing I, I can see this thing being used for is getting out Armadies very quickly. Um, this is an immediate use. But with this deck, with being able to normal summon twice per turn and, and special summon from the deck with multiple cards, we're talking Sphere, we're talking Diva, we're talking Nimbles. A lot of summoning from the deck. And this thing is just like the core of all the insanity. That is sure to ensue upon us in Duel Links. <laughs> May God have mercy on us all. But anyway, so that's that's basically why I say it for last. Because it, it summons uh, a lot of, well, I say a lot of, but all the ones I'm pointing to right now of the uh, of mermails are Aqua. But there are there are Sea Serpent, I'm pretty sure it's Sea Serpent mermails that are level 3. Come on, I know there are. I'm just not looking at them. Which one is it? Aqua, Aqua. Aqua, maybe there's not Aqua. Oh, there was alternate card art for Abyss Lind. Nope, can't show that. Can't show that stomach. Actually, I, oh, I see another reason why they censored it. <laughs> aqua. Yeah, okay. So, so all the level threes are Aqua, which is interesting because some of the level fours, actually, all the level fours are fish. Huh. That's very interesting. 
level fours are fish, level three are aqua, and the level sevens are uh, aqua and sea serpent. Huh, interesting. Anyway, back to the point. Uh, this thing could summon out a whole bunch of stuff from Atlanteans, uh, and just overall, it's, it's just an insane card. Uh, I expect to see it a lot in the future. Uh, next is uh, the last water, I guess, water focused. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Because there's another water arch archetype next. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Gunnir, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Now, leave out the Ice Barrier part and just call it Gunnir Dragon. <laughs> or just call it Gunnir. Because <laughs> that's what the community does. Basically, it's level 7, 2500 attack, 1600 defense. It takes a tuner plus one or more non tuner water monsters. Super easy to do. Uh, it's like the combo you said with uh, Fish Pork Archer. Send Angler. Angler brings two level two Nimbles. That's a level seven right there. Easy peasy. Its effect mm -hmm. is also insane. Once per turn, discard the two cards uh, to the graveyard to target the same number of cards the opponent controls. Destroy them. Very good card. This also used to be banned in uh, the TCG, uh, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and it's just the Ice Barrier stuff. The Synchros were insane. The rest of the deck, no. So, it's, it's like, you, you have this amazing monster uh, that works with water, and it also, its effect of discarding also works with the Atlanteans. So, I mean, <laughs> there's not really a way that you can't run this card uh, in this deck. I think this is a super rare or an ultra rare. Which one is it? Yeah, it's a super rare. Okay. So, it's it's just overall, it's a very good very uh very good synchro card um just run in every water deck you play <laughs> all right next is christron uh do you want to read the effects of these oh or? hello <laughs> let's get to, let's get down to this okay yeah. so let's start with the tuners starting off with the super one that being christron citri this is your kind of box by the way <laughs> i know <laughs> Okay, so Citri. This is a level two machine tunnel. It has a similar effect to the other Crystal tunnels. That being, you can down your opponent's main phase or battle phase, target a non tuner monster. With Citri's case, it's the graveyard. Spare summon it as its effects negated, and you immediately synchro summon using that to summon a machine synchro. Using, exa using exclusively those two cards. And they get banished after the synchro summon. So that's the basis of the archetype. And then there's Weehan, which capitalizes pretty well off of that one. Similar effect upon its main phase or battle phase. Target a banished non tunal monster, especially when it, its effects are negated. Immediately synchro summon using exactly those two cards. Citri banishes that card. Then we on can we uh, bring back that one you yes banished to do a synchro play with that one. And with this case, they get self back in the deck when used for the synchro summon. The final tunnel that they have is Quan. This is a level one Daniel opponent's main phase or battle phase. He's best on a non tunnel monster from your hand. Its effects are negated. It's used as a synchro summon for a machine type synchro like the other ones. And they, well, go to the graveyard, as you expect. It's just the other two that decided to change things up. So ideally what it looks like for me being an observer and not really a player of this archetype is Quan first, then Citri, then Rion. Yeah. Quan will send it to the graveyard. Citri brings it back from the graveyard to banish them. Rion then brings that back from the uh, banished pile to uh, synchro summon, at which point they go back to the deck. So you can draw them and use Quan again. <laughs> yeah. That's the basic theme. Now, on to the non tuners. Let's uh, go in means of increasing level, starting with pe uh, Perisortal. This being a combination of Peridot and to uh, Total, obviously. Hmm. So. Are you going to make a Steven Universe reference? No. 
Okay. <laughs> I did that enough in the video we recorded yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> they like using crystals, I've noticed. Anyway, yeah. so... All the non-tuners have the same effect, apart from the big non-tuner, which we're going to get to last. So that is, they can target one card you, one face of a card you control, destroy that, and special on a Crystron Tunnel from your deck. But you can only special on uh, Machine Synchros from your x for the rest of ton. Good thing they so, did, because I would combine it with Ancient Gears. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, very much locks you into that one kind of summon. Which, which is very specific. Now let's get into their individual effects. And those are all graveyard effects, which do not have the restriction on them. Now, by the way, there's a hard ones turn that says you can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. Just to get that out of the way. So, you can pass Parasortal from the graveyard to special on any Crystal monster from your hand. Good for field drumming. Moving on, we have, uh, where is it? There we go, Smigel. Smigel, same effect as the previous one. You can destroy a face-up card in order to bring out a Crystron Tunnel. And this one you can pass from the graveyard to add one Crystron Spell Trap card. Which ones did we get? Uh, just entry and crystal like potential, which does not count, unfortunately. Oh, okay, so we didn't get impact. Okay. No. Uh, and just uh, double check. I'm not saying Thice Fun. Uh, no, no. The, the purple one is, is not in the game. Okay. So. But Rosenix is. So moving past that one to the level four, that being the Rosenix one you just mentioned. So Rosenix, you can banish from the graveyard to. Get a level one machine water crystal token, and it cannot be tributed. Kind of basic in this one. I don't see an inherent benefit of it in this necessarily. With the links, I can see a lot of possibilities with it. Yeah, it's yeah. just that with uh, your synchro summons, you can only all the tunes are only those two monsters. So you can't bring in the token for that. So it's not very relevant to this. But a level 4 is still very important. Oh, yeah. Actually, I guess that more depends on what levels of missing synchros we have. Anyway, so right. moving it's, it's on. It's not just machine, machine water. It's just machine in general? Um, You're locked into machine synchros. Okay, okay. You, you read uh, Solfefnir. So, Solfefnir. And I'll look so at Machine this, Tuners. The synchros, I mean. So, so this is a level 5. It, you can special from your hand or graveyard by discarding a Crystron card, except another copy of itself. And with, by doing that, you get a special in a defense position. And as, as soon as it's summoned, you have to destroy one card you control. And it's actually completely fine if you destroy itself. Because it has a flowing effect when it's destroyed by battle or card effect. That being you can special on a crystal and monster from your deck in defense position. And of course, there's a hard one to turn on this. Now, but not like the, a, only one effect per turn type thing like the others. No, you, no. This combo is perfectly with itself. Now, unlike the other ones that say uh, crystal and tunnel and lock you into synchro machines for those turn, this one does not lock you in and it says any crystal and monster, so not just tunnel. And let's go ahead and deal with the really big synchro that they gave us. Yeah, real, real quick, before you move on to that one, the only uh, machine tuners that I've seen that are possibly usable uh, for this archetype are Formula Synchron, which I don't even think, what, they don't have another level one besides Quan. So, no. I guess scratch that one off. Uh, Power Tool, I can't really see them using. No. Beret, they I guess they could use because they can change the battle position. Um, uh, what did you say? Car, uh, Car Curry Beret. Oh. The level seven synchro. They could yeah. use that one for the battle position. Uh, yeah, they change. could use that. Yep. Uh, then I guess that's it. I don't I don't really see any other ones. I'm waiting for 
super heavy samurais to get do, put do in we here. have powered insectron uh yes we do we do that is also a machine I okay so that, that can work yep but, but there, anyway, there is so... one more there is one more and wow. that is vermilion dragon mech okay really good <laughs> it, yeah interesting one um no uh what why i'm talking about this one you look up if steam synchronizes on the game i need to know oh okay anyway so i'm not even gonna try pronouncing the name of this question no it takes two tuners and one non-tuner. It's a sync nine. And if this card is sync or summoned, you can target one. Well, no, you can target monsters your opponent controls and/or in the graveyard up to the number of synchro materials used for this synchro summon up, and then bash those targets. Oh. And if this synchro summon card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one bash monster, except this card special to your field. It doesn't say one of your bass monsters, so you can bring back one of the ones that you banished by this effect. Now, did you find out anything about Steam Sync one? It's not in the game, but I can imagine Jacked. it being really hilarious if you banish an opponent's reactor dragon, or if they somehow banish, or if they summon an Egyptian god and you banish it and bring it back. That would be just yeah. the funniest thing I think I've ever seen. Anyway, so I was hoping we either had that thice one. Or Steam Sync one, because then we would have the potential of doing Ties of the Brethren. Unfortunately, we don't have either of those, so that's not as much of an option. Nope. And I so, guess they're smart. I guess they're smart for doing yeah. that. So this one and the uh, Vermilion are kind of difficult to summon. Yep. Now, um, I well, I guess I'll talk about this one. Crystallic Potential. All Crystron monsters you control gain 300 attack and defense. Once per turn during the end phase, you can draw cards equal to the number of Crystron synchro monsters you special on this thumb. Specifically, Crystron synchro monsters. See, we only have one, and that's. Oh, wait, no, no I forgot we have the two. five. We have I see two. the five. Yeah, I didn't see the five, though. Okay. So, I don't think you'll be able to summon that many of them in one turn. No. And no, it, and yes, it's Crystallic and not Crystron, so you can't even start it out with Smigel. And for clarification, there are no Crystron spell cards. There's only trap cards. That's an interesting uh, <laughs> read on uh, Smiger then. <laughs> what? It says spell and trap cards to search. Yeah, but there's only trap cards. There's no spells. It's like the reverse of Net Cards of Clauseless. Yeah, yeah, right? But anyway, because I forgot that this one was there, Crystron Amatrix. So this is a Sync 5, a lot easier to summon than the Sync 9. So, expecting that you can use the, the 2 tunnel with the with the 3, that being Smigel, or you can use the total with the Weon. So there's a lot of potential with that. Yep. And 2500 attack for a level 5 is I, really good. Yeah, actually, I suppose you can also use corn with Rosenix. Mm. But anyway, Many combos. so Many it's combos. it's the easiest one to summon. Now, with this, if this guy is single summon, you can change all face up special monsters your opponent controls to defense position. And if this synchro summon card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon a non synchro Crystron from your graveyard. So, pretty good recovery. Ideally, I guess uh, Quan and uh, Rosenix would be the one you want to use because they're sent to the graveyard after they're sent for material. Uh, yeah. And then you can revive Rosenix or Quan and then summon another one next turn. Uh, but that yeah, just that the immediate work. effect of changing every special monster to defense uh, is huge, especially if you're using if, if you have that field spell and you got a stat boost, you're getting over blue eyes, uh, you're getting over. Uh, Umatrix, uh, Umastrix, I think is what's called, uh, for Subterras. Uh, it, it's overall, it, it's, I, I, I can't really say it's a bad card. It's a great card. Okay, now final one, Crystal Entry. This is their trap card. You can switch on two Crystal Tuners, one from your hand and one from your graveyard, and that's the first effect. The next is the graveyard effect, which you cannot use the same turn as sent to the graveyard. So you can bash this card from your graveyard, then target one crystal monster you control, send one crystal monster from your deck to the graveyard whose 
got a different level from that targeted monster. And if you do, that targeted monster's level becomes the level of the scent monster. So it's a good amount of level manipulation. And it's uh, very good for getting tuners out because, let's say, you did manage to get one in the graveyard and you have one in your hand. During your opponent's turn, you can use this to bring out both of them. And if you want three on and Citri, you can do the perfect setup. Well, that it. Actually, yeah, that low lock. You can just use uh, Citri with the level 3 Smigel. Go into the Amstrix that we just talked about. At which point you will use Rion with the now banished Smigel to sink 6 into Powered and Zectron. Which is a good one to summon your opponent's turn because you can no longer take battle damage. And if you do it during, during the battle phase, that will be even better because all your opponent's monsters will be in defense position. Yep. There's potential here. Definitely. A lot. Uh, except you for could the say, spell. <laughs> Ironically, the one that doesn't have the potential is the one that has potential name. <laughs> all right. Uh... So is that pretty much all you got to say about Christron? Yeah. All right. Uh, you're, Wish you're, they you're had kind of been breaking up a little bit. Not too bad to where I couldn't understand you. Uh, but go ahead and try leaving the call real quick and then joining back. Hello? Hello. Say something. Okay. Does it seem better now? Oh, yeah, a lot better. It just I think okay. it's something that would Discord if you stay in a call for too long. It might just get kind of weird. Yeah, uh, seems like it. Yeah. Anyway, moving on to the next one. I know this is more of your archetype, but I'm going to save your voice a little bit. <laughs> aliens? <laughs> yeah, aliens. <laughs> Once yeah. again, a reminder, Sixes has a sore throat, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> he is he is volunteering his his uh, throat to help talk about the archetypes that I do not know much about. Uh, the aliens, I do know a pretty decent uh, um, amount. So uh, about... we've got five, right? Yep. We got Ammonite, okay. uh, Dog, Code of Ancient Ruins, uh, and Golgar. Yep. I, I don't think we have another one. Um, dog? Uh, kid? I uh, kid, was... kid? Okay, Kid, kid and uh, Overlord Overlord are reprints Okay. Uh, in this box. So, And I made sure I put them in the side deck here for my dueling book, um, my dueling book deck, uh, just to remember that these two are being reprinted. It's a shame that the the actual, you know, very, very important cards, such as Recombination Device and Mysterious Triangle aren't the game, aren't reprinted, I mean. They are in the yeah. game, but from a very old box at this point. Um, but anyway, so starting off, I guess I'll start off with Ammonite, because it's probably the most important one. It's also ultra rare. Screw you, Konami. Uh, <laughs> I wish they swapped this with Gogol. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you really only need, like, maybe... You could get by with one Golgar. You could. Uh, but anyway, whatever. It's It should be a, a super rare. Golgar should be ultra rare. Bullcrap, it's a main box. It shouldn't be because that's two main boxes that you have to go through to get aliens. It's stupid, but that's what Konami does. Anyway, Alien Ammonite is level one. This Reptile Tuner is regarded as one of the best early uh, tuner monsters I think they made. Uh, when this card is normal summon, you can special summon a level 4 or lower alien from your grave, destroy it during the end phase. Well, that doesn't matter because you're going to use it for this. I'm going to skip the rest of them and go straight to Golgar. Level 5, 2600 attack, which is insanity for a level 5. The highest attack of any level 5, with a, which I think is calm saying for the fact that it's as locked in as you can make it. Yes, it takes alien ammonite specifically as a tuner and one or more non-tuner alien monsters. So this is only going to be made... In its archetype. Unfortunately, it itself is not an alien. <laughs> Which means it doesn't gain the effects of the attack, the attack drops of eight counters. But, whatever. <laughs> that also means you can't revive it with, like, the uh, ruins. Which is also in the game. Just rip, 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 rest in peace. Why didn't they name it Alien Cosmic Fortress Golgar? Whatever. Hey, one thing I want to bring up real quick. Well, I talked about this to you before. Mysterious Triangle has to be specifically a level 4 alien. Right. right. Yeah. Okay, so why is that one specifically level 4, but Ammonite, which is level 4 lower, you're only going to be starting level 4s with it? 
<laughs> it's just bizarre. Just like aliens. <laughs> but anyway, so Golgar, why is this card so good? Well, we, all, we already talked about the attack and its ease of summoning, but also um, with its effect. Once per turn, you can select any number of face-up spell and trap cards, return those cards to their owner's hand, hands, and distribute new eight counters among monsters on the field equal to the number of cards uh, returned by this way. And then once per turn, you can remove two eight counters from anywhere on the field to destroy a card your opponent controls. So there's a certain combo with aliens that exist, um, and it's a very, very good combo. Uh, a spell recombination device is a quick play spell that whenever you use it, you send the alien from your deck to the grave and put uh, an equal number of eight counters on a monster your opponent controls equal to the monsters that, that you sent uh, equal to its level. So ideally you send alien warrior or um, telepath or kid and you yeah. put four eight counters on the board. Then, if you have Ammonite in your hand, or if you don't, next turn you can banish your recombination device to search for Ammonite, um, then you can normal summon Ammonite, revive the card you just sent to the graveyard, and then go into the synchro. You already have four eight counters on the board. Uh, you are also returning all face-up spell and traps, so stuff like uh, Amazonas, Onslaught, um, opposing Code A Ancient Ruins, if you're writing versus Aliens, uh, and, and some other archetypes that well, as well that use continuous uh, spell and travel cards like, uh, uh, what are they called, Metaphys uh, as well. So there's quite a bit of use for this effect, but also the second effect of being able to destroy something um, that's also not targeting, uh, it's not targeting to remove the A counters, and it's not targeting to destroy it. It's destroying any card, so it's very good, very, very good. And because it has 26 on attack, it will tie with Neos. Um, if it's just, you know, Neos being run in another deck besides Heroes, of course. Um, which it rarely is running in Heroes anyway. So, Golgar overall is... I, well, this is the card that I hold to a pedestal of what archetype-specific boss monsters should be. Only really good out attack. by the archetype. Very good. It, it, yeah, it's really good attack. It can pretty much just be a hey true aid, and it distributes a counters, which is necessary for the deck's playstyle, and non-targeting destruction, right. not face up specifically, just any card, yep. regardless of position. Normally, you would groan because it says only face up spell and trap cards, but at the same time, you're destroying. Any card, so you can destroy those set cards if you're afraid of them being battle traps. Uh, you can destroy them before you even go into the battle phase with its other effects. So it's just overall, it's hey, such a great or, card. Or you know, since you're destroying a counters, put them on your opponent's small stores so you can use it with telepath. So you can use telepath to destroy those. Yep, yep. There's so much potential and a use of this one card. It's a shame that you had to go through two main boxes to build this deck, but if you went through the old one and uh, you somehow get lucky enough to get three Ammonite very quickly, then good for you. But if you're like most people, you're not going to have that. Uh, it, it's very stupid and unfortunate, but this deck is great. It's just extremely expensive. Um, so now on to Code A. Uh, actually, I'm going to talk about Dog first. I'm going to go through the monsters. Oh, right, I forgot what I was doing. Alien Dog is level 3. I don't see a whole lot of use for it other than Field Swarming, but I'll talk about it. Level, it's a level 3, like I said. 1500 tag, 1000 defense. When you normal summon an alien monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. It can't miss timing because it says when. When you do, place two A counters on face of monsters here opponent controls. So, right here, instant A counter distribution. I forgot about that part to be honest. So, yes, it's going to have a good use. Uh, ideally, let's say you summon uh, alien warrior or alien kid or whatever. Uh, Ammonite as well, I think, will work. Um, it's just, I'm pretty yeah. sure one of these effects will miss timing. No. It won't? Uh, I've done this before. Oh. Um, so I'm going to Ammonite. It's going to revive the monster, but you're also going to get a dog from your hand. So you get three monsters on the field. I don't understand timing at all, but whatever. <laughs> and also because so. you only have potential for five, add this one in, you can probably make any of the eights. Yep. So Star Wars, Red Dragon, Ultimate, all that kind of stuff. So much. <laughs> so yeah, I guess it does have more use than I initially thought. I kind of forgot about the good uh, egg counter spreading for it. So yeah, instant egg counter spreads, monster on board, uh, 
the attack is decent for a level 3 as well. 1500 is not bad. Uh, but the next card I'm going to talk about is definitely, I think, a staple in this deck. And, and thank God, at least this one is... I think it's rare. Yeah, thank God. Something yeah. was actually cheap in this deck. Each time a face of alien monster is destroyed, place... Oh, yeah, this is a continuous spell, by the way. Each time a face of alien monster is destroyed, place an A counter on this card. Once per turn, you can remove two A counters from anywhere on the field, not just this card, and then special summon an alien monster from your grave. Meaning oh. it's fine to, yes, activate it, then use Gogor's effect to return it and other ones to the hand, so you can get A counters on the field, then activate this again from your hand, which, incidentally, would also get away get around the soft ones per turn claws. Ah, so and, good. <laughs> yeah, so you have the potential to uh, summon Gogor, use this, uh, use A counters to bring anything back from the graveyard, then use Gogol's effect, bounce this back to the hand, activate it again, use the spell cards he has placed, and get another special into the field. Like, can you imagine you can... if Golgar was an alien monster? You'd be able to revive this, use its effect on the card it just used to revive it, then use that card again. <laughs> it's nuts, man. It's nuts. So good. So good. Unfortunately, we're suffering from a CN effect. Well, you know, like CN is not a six samurai. Oh, oh yeah, CN. Okay, okay, yeah. It it's it it is kind of annoying uh, for Great Shogun, yeah. but they at least fixed it with the synchro. They didn't fix it with this synchro, because <laughs> there actually is. Isn't there another Golgar, uh, or or like a Cosmic Fortress? You're you're, you're thinking of Cosmic Holo Gangly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I think of when I see this. I think of that that's monster as the, well. That's the one that has an effect when you. Uh, summon it using a monster your opponent controlled. Yeah, yeah. Because they do have quite a bit of uh, take control of effects. They have a trap card that does it, they have a monster that does it, but it's a Gemini, so it's not really worth it. Uh, but to go back as well uh, with Aliens with previous cards, Overlord is a reprint, and I'm glad at least they gave this one uh, because it's actually very good as well. You remove two egg counters from the field, special summon it. Uh, that lets you do level 7 synchro plays if you want. Uh, and it also has the uh, attack reduction effect and once per turn placing eight counters on each face of monster upon controls once again generating counters for code ancient ruins as well as Golgar. so deck is fantastic i just wish it wasn't so expensive man mm. <sighs> why why anyway if you're a if you're a, a constant gambler and you're always winning in vegas Play, uh, try and build this deck. If not, then you know save your money. But ah, uh, what what a shame. But anyway, uh, that's all the archetype stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna go over a bit of just random stuff that doesn't uh, belong to anything else in this box. But they're, this they, they do belong to archetypes, just not in this box. Uh, first is Ronin Toten. It's level two. It's frog, basically, but not really a frog. Its name always is Dez Frog while it's on the field. Uh, and it cannot be used as a synchro material. Good thing, because its effects are really good. It discards in a graveyard. Banish one frog monster from your graveyard. You're supposed to summon this card. Uh, this is not once per turn. You can keep doing this as much as you want. Uh, and with Swap Frog being in the game, um, and also Trade Frog, and I think Substitute is in the game. But also Flip Flop Frog is also in the game in this box as well. Uh, but I don't think Flip Flop Frog, what a name, is going to be very uh, impactful as much as Run and Toad. So I did want to mention this and slightly mention that one as well. Uh, aren't but, we also getting uh, Trade Toad? Yes, Trade Toad is also very good. Isn't that the one that got banned? Oh, no, no, that's a. Um, oh, what is it? It's a, it, it is Toad. Substitute. Substitute, okay. is the one I'm thinking of. I get them confused because they look the same. They they basically are. This one's more, I guess, cute and, and chibi. <laughs> this one's more, Substitute's kind of more disturbing. But yeah, Substitute, Substitute is not once per turn. And you can just keep tributing monsters, especially with frogs from the deck. Stupid. <laughs> That's not once per turn. Uh, but then comes Trade Toad to save the day, having a very similar effect, uh, except it's focused on reviving them from the graveyard. And it's also once per turn. So, it's fair. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's all. That's that's pretty much all the frogs I wanted to mention. Next is Nightmare Penguin. I don't think penguin themselves are going to be that great of an archetype. They technically are an archetype. Uh, but because a puny penguin 
And the great Emperor Penguin. And no Penguin, I think, as well. Penguin, yes. Penguin. Yes, those three. But anyway, but this one's the one I think will make the most impact. I think this is the best one we have in the game so far. Because Penguin Soldier's not in the game yet. Um, I was going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> so Nightmare Penguin's level 4. It's 1800 defense, which isn't that bad. But its main thing is uh, when it's flipped face up, you return. You target a card your opponent controls and return to the hand. So not just Monster Spell and Trap as well. Um, this is an excellent... I guess substitute for um, if you were playing uh, Neos, Neos Stall back in the day, you would be running Gale Lizard uh, or Evil Swarm, the Owl one that flips face up and returns a card. Um, this is a great replacement for that. It's also a lot cheaper, um, and it's it's definitely a good card to consider if you're running Neos Stall, which still is a somewhat popular deck. Um, but other than that, I don't really see too many uses for it. It doesn't flip back down, so I can't see it in the sub-terrors. Uh, but overall, Nightmare Penguin could have some future use. Next is Mega Phantom Beast Beast o Lion. Uh, this is a level 2 tuner. You can banish this card from your grave immediately after this effect resolves. Normal summon a Mega Phantom Beast from your hand. While you control token, this card cannot be destroyed by battle card effects. And if this card uh, is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon Mega Phantom, one Mega Phantom Beast token. Uh, and you can only use this effect once per turn. So it's another Mecha Phantom Beast tuner. It allows you to bring out, uh, I guess, more even levels. The issue that I have uh, is the Mecha Phantom Beast synchros. If I'll pull them up real quick, Mecha Phantom Beast are uh, both odd numbered. They're level seven and level nine. If you have one token and a level four Mecha Phantom Beast, it becomes seven. And then uh, Beast O' Lion, which does not increase its level uh, by tokens, uh, unlike the others do. This one does not. A level 2 plus level 7 makes it easy. Level 9, Jacku Loose Land. Uh, but if you do that, uh, I, I don't really know how, how valuable this card is. When summon you tribute tokens up to the number of cards in your opponent's hand, randomly discard cards. Uh, from your hand. So basically, the maximum you could do is one. Um, and then other Mecha Phantom Beast Monster 2 Control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, and this card in its own position is destroyed. Target a set quick play spell. Uh, you can set one quick play spell from your deck. Quite a strange card. Uh, and it's easier to summon now, but I still don't see it making Mecha Phantom Beast top tier or anything. Next is Junk Giant. I actually really like this card. If your opponent controls a level 5 or higher monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Especially with Cyber Dragon being put into the game, this is great. And since Xyz aren't out yet, this is super consistent, um, as most decks are running high-level monsters. A Synchro Summon uh, using this card's material can't be negated. And if a player Synchro Summons using this card's material, the other player can activate cards or effects uh, in response when the monster is Synchro Summoned. So, Floodgate? Nope. Kanadia? Nope. Uh, it, it, it's really good. Now Kanani can be activ activated afterwards, but immediately, no. Uh, so Junk Giant, I like it. It's pretty good. It makes a secure summon, so you at least get like a summon effect of them um, off. Where it will be used is yet to be determined. It is level 6, uh, so you have to kind of use a level 2 or a level 3 with Vermilion Dragon to get any really use of it. Um, but I can see some future use of this definitely uh, being in the future. Especially because it's also essentially a free summon. Uh, 12 hard defense. So it's a somewhat beefy body for easy summon monster stuff. It is dependent on your opponent. But like I said, most decks until X's come out will be using level 5 or higher monsters. Two more. Uh, well, technically three more. I lied. <laughs> Gem Armadillo. This is fantastic. Uh, what, why is it in this box? I don't know. I was confused by that too. Yeah, it's level it's level four, seventeen hundred attack, uh, rock monster. It's not a gem knight, so you can't uh, search it with itself, nor can you uh, use it in gem knight fusions, except for the rock one that just takes another rock monster. When the scar is normal, so I mean, you can add. Wait, why wasn't this in the rock structured not structured deck mini box that was just released? Magnet warriors, yeah. tribe mid. Yeah. Huh. That makes no sense. Apparently, armadillos are slow. <laughs> anyway, when it's normal summon, you get to add a Gemini monster from your deck to your hand. So once per turn, see if you summon it multiple times. 
Uh, you can lose its effect multiple times. Not likely that that will happen, but it is something to look to look into possibly happening. Gem Armadillo is super good for the consistency. It adds any Gem Knight that you don't have in your hand at the start of the turn to your hand. And overall, it helps eliminate the use of Grass is Greener. Will it? Probably not. But it will still um, make 20 card versions of the deck a lot more consistent. There's also, there's also a Fusion Aquamarine put in the game, but I don't see it being used. It's only got 1400 attack, 2400 defense, and it changes to defense when it attacks. Its effect of returning a card on the field to the hand when it's sent from the field to the grave is good, but uh, it's only when it's sent from the field to the grave. So I can't really recommend that card at all. I can recommend Armadillo, though. Uh, I think this is a rare... I think yes. it is. Oh, yes, yeah, it, yeah is. it is. Okay, okay. Yep, there it is. So it's not that hard to pull for. Um, it is annoying that you have to get it in this box just for one card you have to go into this box for. But, oh, well. Uh, it It's not as bad as, I guess, the way they treat aliens. <laughs> anyway, last card uh, the main of the main deck, anyway. Reject Reborn. This is a super rare trap. Or is it ultra rare? I can't remember. Yeah, it's super, super rare. rare. When the opponent's monster declares a direct attack and the battle phase, then you can spell summon one tuner and one single monster from your grave, but they had their effects negated. Oh my goodness. This is uh, uh, annoying for multiple reasons. One, the second effect of this, of reviving cards, is optional. So you can run this install. Great. My favorite thing to fight. Uh, it just makes it more annoying and, and more turn stally. And why? But anyway, the second effect, if you're using it in a non-scumbag way, is very good because it allows you to make bigger synchros uh, and also just have more monsters on board and make a pretty good comeback. They do have their effects negated, but ideally the intent of this card, intent of this card, is to bring out a bigger synchro with the revived monsters. Not stall, but they're going to do it anyway, aren't you? You little dirty scumbag stall players, you're going to do it anyway. Anyway. <laughs> do, do, do you think I got my message out that I don't like stall? <laughs> uh, Say what? Okay, now you're cutting out. Oh, okay. My bad. Do you think I got my message out of, of uh, that I don't like stall? Yes. <laughs> last card. Actually, the last card on the list that I feel like is worth bringing up. Simsara, Dragon of Rebirth. This is a new generic level 5 synchro um and it has 2600 defense which is pretty good 100 attack which is weak however its effect is pretty decent it is card is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave or if this card you control is sent to the grave by an opponent's card effect whether that be destruction or descending uh you can target one monster in either player's graveyard and special summon it this is pretty huge uh it can't summon itself but overall it can be very very impactful uh because of the monster reborn element at the end Sure, you have to wait till it's destroyed or sent to a graveyard by an opponent, but the revival is, I would say, near limitless with possibilities. You can summon an ancient gear reactor dragon and then make them have to deal with it. Um, you can summon the blue eyes and make them have to deal with the attack power. Um, crash into something suicide, maybe if, if you have, um, if they if they don't have a like the mountain field spell, I guess. Which I guess that would also boost yours. But anyway, the main thing is just the possibilities with the card is pretty good. And I can see people uh, citing this in or running it as a, as a third copy of a level 5 instead of three Armadies. Maybe they're running two Armadies and one Samsara. Uh, this is a super rare. So it will be kind of hard to get, but not as hard as an ultra rare. So um, it's, it, it, you can also get two of it since it's a main box. You can't get two of it. Uh, which, yeah. Ammonite definitely should have been a super rare in that case. <laughs> Screw you, Konami. But anyway, uh, that's basically the, the deck. I've, I've gone through everything that I think is relevant, just looking through this one last time. I'm just not seeing anything else. Oh yeah, Night, Night Beam. This card isn't new. It's been in a selection box, but it previously was not able to be obtained except for that box. But now you can get it in this as well, so... It's not a right card. I don't think it's anything super great. I think Cosmic Cyclone is better, but um, it doesn't really have a cost. It's just more specific on what it does. Um, so you be the judge on it if you think that's worth it or not. Also reprinted in the box is Abyss Gund. 
Uh, when it's discarded to the grave, you can revive a mermail monster uh, from your graveyard. Spined Gilman, which I use for my water farm deck for a long time. Uh, I don't think it's very good in a deck for a competitive, but it is an option. They also reprinted uh, Cetus, the equipped spell for Mermail, which uh, negates traps. Real quick, real quick. Uh, why did they make Scrap Archfiend a super whale? I don't know. <laughs> I just realized I was in this pack. Yeah, and I don't think it's worth mentioning because we have Black Rose, which is always going to be a better option than this, I would say. I know, that's why I'm confused. Hmm. It's just, I don't know. It should not be an ultra rare. Uh, Shore okay. Knight, which I don't really think is a great card. Um, it, it's also reprinted. And then Mecha Sea Dragon Plesion, which actually is a kind of a, not really a competitive card, but a, a very hype, epic anime duel kind of card, I guess, uh, that was reprinted. And then some kind of frog. Actually, no, it's it's a... It's just for fish, sea serpent, and aqua monsters. Underworld Egg Clutch. When a face up fish, sea serpent, or aqua monster control is banished, at level four, lower fish, sea serpent, aqua from your deck to your hand. Okay. Uh, this is actually answers. more of a generation fish called, yeah. you know, with the uh, O Fist. Oh, I just realized they put Royal Swamp Eel in here. I know. Now, that's something I didn't realize at first. That's a level four generic tuner that, um, well, no, no, I can't. It has to be used for. Uh, the other materials must be fish. Uh, yeah. But if you're running the fish deck... Right, all of, or nimble, or... Right. You know, I guess you don't really need it with fist bull because they're all way tuners. Right. But yeah. That's something to consider whenever you're building a deck. But besides that, I'm not seeing anything else uh, that's immediately catching my eye of something really good. Maybe there's something with Amphibious Burkroth, the level 5 non-effect uh, fusion. Maybe there's something with that that I'm missing. Uh, maybe there's something with Bolt Penguin that I'm missing, but besides that, uh, I, I think I think I'm done here. <laughs> Do you have anything else? My throat is dying. <laughs> we will end it there. But yeah, so uh, in the future, I'm going to be streaming uh, some testing of the decks that are in this box, um, especially Poseidra. I just want to figure out how the most optimal way to run the Poseidra is. Um, and also aliens. I really want to test that out since I won't be able to play it very well in the actual game uh, I can at least test it in dueling book and show you guys how it works. So Thanks for watching this stream. Thank you sixes for sacrificing your throat for the sake of entertainment and knowledge of the Yu-Gi-Oh community Yeah <laughs> But anyway, thanks for watching check out my other streams check out his channel. He uploads Yu-Gi-Oh content uh, a lot I, of just, I, I just had a uh, Quistron deck profile come up on my channel. Perfect, perfect. His favorite deck is White Aura, Fish, Nimble, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. So he's very knowledgeable of this, and, and I wouldn't have asked him to do this otherwise, <laughs> cause, especially with his throat hurting. If like you're that, curious, yeah. there's also a White Aura replay yeah. and deck list on my yeah. channel. I couldn't have done this review uh, nearly as good as he could have done it with all the fish stuff. So thank you. Uh, for helping me. <laughs> but yeah, so check out his channel. Check out my uh, YouTube channel as well as, uh, as my Twitter. And of course, follow me on DLive. Get me to 200 uh, followers and I can start uploading my videos here uh, as well as the YouTube. And uh, hopefully start making some money to pay for some dental stuff. That would be great. Uh, but yeah, pri uh, primary goal right now is 100. Overall goal is 200. So if you can follow me, I'll follow you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace out. Stopping stream. 